Hello and welcome to Fret Dojo, which is all about mastery of jazz guitar. Now today you might notice something a little bit different. There is someone else in the dojo today. I'd like to introduce to you my good friend and amazing guitarist extraordinaire, the fabulous Stuart King. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me on. Oh, my pleasure, Stu. It's great to have you here. Yeah. So, uh, a little bit of context. Stu and I have been working on Stuart's debut album, which is called Qualia, which will be coming out in the hopefully the next few weeks. Yeah. Uh, I've been helping master Stu's album, and I also play on a few of the tracks as well. So it's been a great project, but in the meantime, while he's been here to work on that, Stu's kindly decided to do a bit of a workshop for us, which is fantastic. So what are you going to talk about today, Stu? Well, we're going to look at uh, improving your speed on the guitar, improving your ability to play faster scale passages passages and uh, or faster phrases but not only that being able to play faster tempos in general and we're really going to try and hone in on some techniques that I've discovered uh, not very well known but uh, these you know these secrets are going to really help you um, uncover something you didn't think you knew that you could do and everyone can play fast um, you just need to know the right way to go about it and I want to share that with you today I really hope that you can take something away from this and uh, slay that speed demon that's been pestering you send it back to beyond <laughs> thank you Dr. Speed well I look forward to seeing what you come up with in this one but we'll get right into the workshop right after this <laughs> started out playing guitar like most guitarists I was always impressed you know with people playing fast and all that sort of thing and it was very you know I still like it it still sounds cool but when I was starting to play jazz guitar uh, the first time I heard say Pat Martino I was blown away and uh, just the, the the way he could play those you know passages so fast and fluently and it was it was absolutely amazing to hear and I myself wanted to be able to play that way and um, I worked fairly hard at it. And I used the conventional approach at the time, which, you know, is common for most musicians, which was really to, you know, you learn, you learn the passage, you learn the phrase or the lick or whatever, and you practice it with a metronome at a slower speed and then gradually keep increasing the tempo. Um, and that approach is, is, is important and works well up to a point. Uh, what I found though was I would hit this kind of threshold where I couldn't get any faster. So I, ke I kept working on it and kept working on it. And, you know, I, d I did get there to a sense, but it was just never really where I wanted it to be. Uh, and just by accident and by, you know, practicing and experimenting with different things, I actually discovered that the um, conventional approach actually doesn't work that well for developing speed uh, and fluency. Uh, in fact, the opposite is actually true. Uh, to be able to develop your uh, speed on the guitar, you actually need to practice playing fast, not slow, trying to get fast. So in this lesson, I'm going to talk about how to how I developed that and some of the techniques that you can use to develop it yourself and incorporate into your own playing. to download a PDF document with all the examples from today's lesson, all you need to do is click the link below. So now I'll walk you through the process uh, using a lick I have come up with based on a G7 chord. Here it is. <laughs> the lick one more time just a slightly faster <clears throat> so the technique I like to use is something I call sprinting 
So rather than running along, you know, slowly or walking, we're, we're aiming for speed. So we got to learn to sprint. Uh, but first we got to start small, short distances. Uh, and by that, I mean taking a very small part of the lick. So usually four or five notes is pretty good. Um, so, so anything that divides evenly into one or two whole beats would be great. Uh, so the first five notes of that lick were the, these ones. So if I was to count that, it could be one and two and three. Okay. So we've got that there. Um, now I want to just actually, now that I've isolated that section, practice sprinting and playing that really fast. Um, and it's okay if you hit wrong notes or... Um, they don't come through clean or anything like that. The point is we're getting used to just doing little bursts, little fast sprints. Okay, so now that we've isolated our small example, uh, we're going to choose a tempo to practice playing with and we're going to use a metronome. Uh, metronome is very important. Uh, the tempo I've actually chosen to use is 150 beats per minute um, and I will be playing 16th notes. Um, so let's try that out um, just to see what it sounds like. Um, that's 150 there, so let's give it a go. This is a really useful way of practicing. Before you do this, however, you may find that you need to get comfortable with that tempo first. And a useful thing you can do is just practice playing these little sprints, but just on one note, say the first or the final note of the phrase. I like to start with the first note of the phrase. Um, and again, do that with the metronome. Uh, you can do one little sprint every couple of bars if you like. You can do a couple of sprints in a row, or you can do a whole bar on or a whole bar off. Of, so a whole bar of sprints and a bar off. I'll demonstrate a bar of sprints and a bar of no sprints. So first of all, I'll just play one note for every beat. This is really important for learning to lock in with a beat. Again, you might find yourself playing ahead or behind or pushing or dragging, and that's okay as long as you're aware of it. Um, that will help you then to be able to lock in a bit better when you practice your sprints. So now that we've practiced playing with a metronome just on one note, you'll find that you'll probably be able to lock in a lot easier just with the little sprints. What I want to make clear is that it's not actually important if it's a bit, bit messy in terms of the phrasing or hitting the notes or fretting or the left hand isn't quite coordinating with the right. That's okay. What we're trying to do is learn to lock in rhythmically and be able to feel what it's like to play a fast tempo. We can clean up all that stuff later. But for now, let's just get used to being able to play accurately in time with the metronome. So again, hopefully I should be locking in a bit better with that little group of notes with the metronome. Let's give it a go. So now that we've got that first part of the lick together, we're going to move on to the next part. Uh, I am just going to do five notes again, just as before. Uh, however, the starting note of this phrase is the note we finished on so that was the first lick, so now we're starting on this lick for our next part. So let's try that with the metronome again. Okay, so I'm feeling fairly comfortable there. Uh, now I'm going to try uh, as our next step to join the first part together, the first little chunk, and the second chunk to make one bigger chunk. Uh, very chunky. So let's give that a go. So this is really helpful to do this. If you're finding though that joining the, the two shorter chunks together becomes difficult, then you can actually shorten it a little bit more. So taking two notes or three notes off the end. So rather than moving from a five note and then adding the next few notes, you could then just have one or two notes on the end. So for example, instead of having the whole phrase, 
which is comprised of the two or smaller units, like that, we could just leave a couple off the end. Okay, with a metronome. What you might do after that is then add the following note and, and so forth. Okay, so now that uh, we've done the first two parts, I would then go and move on and do each of the other individual parts of the lip. Uh, so hopefully uh, it should sound pretty good once you've worked on all the bits. Feel free to join them in any way or order you like, um, whatever works for you. Uh, let's check it out and see if I can get it all the way through. I'll try that again. So when you're working on this, you'll find that you'll try and play the whole phrase, as I just did, and you know, you might hit the wall or you might fail and it might not kind of happen. And that's okay, that's actually to be expected. Um, Try not to let your ego take too much of a hit because I'm going to show you something here that's actually really cool. What I'm going to do is take the metronome and slow it down a bit. So we're going to take it down to 140. Again, assuming that I just played it at 150, it wasn't quite perfect. That's okay. I'm now going to try and play the exact same lick at 140. First of all, I'll get comfortable with the tempo and then when I'm ready, I'll give it another go and see how we go. <laughs> Again. Okay, I'm feeling much more comfortable at 140 now. Uh, what I'm trying to demonstrate is that when you're playing, when you're working, when you set your tempo, your desired tempo, you will find that what you're doing is you're actually playing at 100% of your ability there. You're really pushing yourself really hard. When you then go and slow the metronome down to 140 or 130 or whatever whatever tempo you're working towards, you'll then find that that tempo starts to feel like, wow, I'm only playing it, say, 80% of my ability now, and it becomes a lot easier. Uh, what we actually need to do now is do something a bit different. Now that you've got a feeling for what it's like to be playing at 80 or 90% of your ability, at a fast tempo, we're actually going to do the same thing, but we're going to set the metronome faster than 150, so that 150, when we go back to playing it there, feels like we're back at 80% again. All right, so now we're going to push the limits of what's possible. Hopefully, I don't melt your face off, but we're going to give it a go. We'll see what happens. I'm going to take the metronome, and I'm going to push it. Let's go... Oh, I'm feeling like 190 today. So uh, let's see how this goes. I didn't know metronomes went that fast. Uh, all right, uh, I'm trying to keep up. But, uh, it's been my master, the metronome. All right, okay. Let's give it a go, see what happens. Ah, close. Maybe not quite. So perhaps what you do when you get to this stage, try the isolation exercises. You know. And then put them both together. So again, do the isolation exercises and go through each of the chunks. So now that, you know, I've attempted that, hopefully maybe you might even get to be able to play at that speed and, you know, um, change people's lives. Uh, but we've given it a go. We failed, but that's cool. We've got a feeling for that. And, you know, it was the same. When we first went to 150, we weren't really kind of getting it either. But let's see what happens now if we go back to 150 which is where we started. Remember, this was our target tempo, 190. Whose idea was that? I've never had anything to do with it. I'll give it a go. 150. Ah, oh, so relaxing. It's a walk in the park. 
So there you go, when we're playing at 150 now, that starts to feel like we're at 90% rather than feeling like we're at 100, 100%. So check it out, try this approach, you know, set your tempo. Yeah, you might not get there and you probably won't and that's cool. Bring it back a bit. Get, get an idea of what it feels like to be playing at 80% or 90% of your ability and then push yourself to the limits, you know. Go wild beyond your wildest dreams and then when you get that, bring it back to where you started and then you start to feel really comfortable at that tempo and you know, you can impress all your friends with all your licks. Well, it's, uh, it was certainly very impressive to say the least that you managed to actually crack the sound barrier through that video. Ah, uh, yep. Uh, hopefully I slayed the mythical beast. You did the, slay the mythical speed, speed demon. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, right. man. So, um, yeah, just before we wrap up, just a question. So you don't actually... Is what you're saying is you don't actually need to play like super clean at those fast tempos because as a you know when I first studied like classical guitar years ago when I was more into that stuff it was all the emphasis on getting the technique perfect and everything really accurate at a slow tempo and then moving it up step by step but trying to keep that perfection but this is totally turned that on its head which is really interesting so is that what you're saying here right so that approach uh, of gradually slowing things down and you know is actually you know, fairly important in its own right but for what we're doing in terms of trying to get sp uh, speed we need to take a different approach and worrying about playing things cleanly is actually going to inhibit us from actually getting to that level mm. of being able to play fast so what we do want to focus on is maintaining rhythmic accuracy and being able to lock in with the metronome at that speed. It's important to use the metronome. I think that when you're, if you do it without the metronome, I don't think your brain necessarily wants to, wants you to play that fast. I don't think we're wired for it instinctively to be able to play extremely fast like that. So the metronome kind of pushes you. And by trying to focus on the tempo and the speed and all that sort of thing, rather than playing clean or coordinating the hands perfectly, you can then learn to, you know, set up those neural pathways in your brain to, you know, start making those connections. And as you do that more and more, you will naturally tend to start to clean things up as you go anyway. And I think that is a much better approach. I mean, you can always go back and slow things down if you mm. like, so there's nothing stopping you from doing that. But at first, just maintain, focus on maintaining the rhythmic accuracy and just actually getting the coordination happening first. And then things will naturally, your fingers will naturally learn to coordinate um, because a lot of it is actually about being able to hear those tempos mm, as well. Mm. Like being able to hear what it sounds like at that speed yeah. is uh, another thing. So there's a bit of ear training involved as well. Oh, well, man, that was an amazing workshop and what a way to kind of bring in my first special guest on video oh, to the Fred honor. Dojo Dojo. It's a pleasure. Oh man, that was awesome. And yeah, I'd like to just mention once again a couple of things. Firstly, don't forget if you want a downloadable PDF of all the exercises Stu covered today, just click the link below this video. And also, uh, most importantly, I'd like to remind you of Stu's fantastic new album that I've helped produce, as I mentioned before, that's coming out in a, in a very short while it's called qualia i believe that's the that's title right. now that's and it. we've had a lot of fun putting this together and yeah i really look forward to letting you guys know about this as you can tell Stu is an amazing guitarist he's got incredible technique and uh he's very humble as well by the way uh but <laughs> yeah he is an insanely good musician and also very musical as well which is something you're going to hear on this upcoming album so Thank you very much for coming, Stu. It was a pleasure, man. And thanks for having me. Yeah, man. And uh, let's um, uh, see where these speed exercises take us. So leave a comment below uh, and let, let us know what you think about this video and this approach. And yeah, look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Fret Dojo. Bye for now. And for more jazz guitar lessons, tips, and free stuff, visit www.fretdojo.com.